people who need the biggest hand is you guys. You met my challenge, and we were an 85th percentile school in the state of Nebraska. Awesome work, Northfield. Woo! Children and teachers at Northfield Elementary in Gearing, Nebraska, celebrate their success in reading. But three years ago, there were no end-of-year celebrations. Back then, testing data showed that Gearing School District was failing across the board, with some children, especially the economically disadvantaged and minority kids, performing significantly below average. This is the story of how the Gearing School District turned itself around. Good morning, everyone, across western Nebraska. Well, it's going to be another cool day with 50s and lower 60s, so do expect... Gearing, Nebraska, a town of less than 8,000 people, has four elementary schools, one junior high, and one high school. Until three years ago, for the most part, teachers and parents thought they were doing okay. But when new superintendent Don Haig took a hard look at the testing data, he realized they had a problem. It was after my first year here in Gearing, I had become very aware that our students weren't performing real well in reading. We weren't doing terrible. I mean, we weren't in the bottom, but we weren't doing as near as well as we would like to do. I think we had less than 30% of our kids performing at grade level in the third grade. Well, I said, that's not good. Those are the kids who are losing in school. Haig broke the bad news to school principals like Mary Kay Hahn. We did not realize as a district how low our scores were. We never looked at it as a whole district or as a whole school. So that was the beginning of our revelation that we really needed to do something for kids and we needed to do something for teachers. of these, we just picked out a couple. I think we had very hardworking teachers. We, I think we have very good teachers. Um, we just hadn't provided them with the right tools, professional development, high quality training. There was just really no consistency. The quality of curriculum we were providing wasn't very good. The data showed that some kids were doing especially badly. Uh, we had huge gaps between our Hispanic students and our white students, between our students on free and reduced lunch, the students that weren't on free and reduced lunch, and we just really felt like you, the demographic group you represent shouldn't determine your achievement level. Um, we felt that we wanted the achievement level of every student to be determined by the high quality of instruction that we should be providing. We're below the state average at 8th and 11th and we're above in 4th grade. And we want to show that. Okay. And, and I want to show uh, ACT. So Gearing School District applied for a federal grant under the Reading First program. Administrators and principals researched curricula and selected direct instruction, a highly structured program totally different from anything the teachers had used before. Yes, what's our, what's, what's our story about today? Get ready. Hunting for a deer. Why does Ann want a deer? Get ready. For a pet. Yes, for a pet. In this sentence, who is Ann talking to? Okay, here we go. Which one was 3,000 years ago? Get ready. Yeah. Oh, you're so smart. Which one was 200 years ago? Read the whole item. Get ready. When the teacher says go, clap. What are you going to do when the teacher says go? Get ready. Clap. When are you going to clap? Get ready. When the teacher says go. Direct instruction is a carefully constructed, research-proven program. Teachers follow scripted lessons. Students answer in unison followed by individual turns. And data is collected continually. We studied all the programs out there that were available and said direct instruction has by far the most impact on students. And so we started communicating with staff we were going to make a change. 
and we were going to approach it differently than we ever had. An educational revolution began at Gearing's Elementary Schools. It was. Let's read it together. Get ready. It was. Was it fun petting the deer? But how would the teachers react to the new reading program? Spell no. Get ready. K N O W A. Word. I I had never heard of it before, and then I heard horror stories. You know, I heard, oh, it's hard and. And it's so hard for teachers, and your creativity is taken away, and um, it's all documentation, and teachers don't have a choice anymore. So I was a little nervous. This is a quick sound, so look where you're headed. And I did see the funny print, and I wondered what's all that about, and and it did look weird, and it sounded weird. Oh, this sound is. But once I figured out that all of those things had a purpose, I understood it. I appreciated it. Mike said. You think you're an expert. I am the expert. Everybody wants to read. They put their hands up. They're excited. Whereas before, the children that didn't feel like they could do it, they didn't have the confidence, they didn't want to do it in front of the class, um, I feel like now they're willing to try. They have the confidence. And sure. They had to make clothes. Okay, possibly had to make the clothing back then. Kaylin? Um, they had to make soap and candles. Right. Now, why I started with the direct instruction program two years ago. At first, I thought, oh, there's this script to read, and I wasn't sure if I saw the benefit of that. And once I had about a month of DI under my belt, I realized this is a really neat program because all the children are actively involved. The air limit for this lesson is eight. I will be keeping track at the whiteboard. All right, I would like Zach, would you please read? England in the 1500s, chapter three. During the 1500s, England had two main classes of people, rich and poor. Get ready. The direct instruction program implemented at Gearing in all four elementary schools provides a comprehensive system of professional development curriculum, instruction, and progress monitoring. Extensive training and on-site support were provided by NIFTI, the National Institute for Direct Instruction. Look right at the book the whole time. Here we go, everybody. A successful implementation depends on a number of factors. First, students are grouped according to their skill level and started on material they can handle. We like to make sure that students are placed in groups according to their ability level and the skills that they've already acquired. I mean, it doesn't make sense to put a first grader who knows how to read into a class that's teaching beginning reading. So we try to target or pinpoint as much as we can in, in a very short period of time um, that particular student's skill set and then place them in, in broad groups and then start teaching. And then once we start teaching, we start gathering student performance data on a daily and weekly basis. Get ready? C! C, 100 years. Which one does 100 years go to? Get ready? B! For kids, it's the best thing. What's the next one? I really do think that it is. Everybody fits into a group. Everyone is learning. Everyone is progressing. And the groups are flexible. You know, if a child is doing very well, we can move him. We can change change the group. If the child is having difficulty, change the group. They stopped walking for they were tired. Okay? So sometimes you can use the word for instead of the word because. They Instructional grouping helps both lower and higher performing students. They were tired. Program benefits higher kids because it puts them into um, a higher group and really allows them to push ahead at their own level um, and they don't have to they don't have to wait for, if there's lower kids they don't have to wait for them and um, if there's a chance for them to move up even to a higher group then they're in they have the chance to do that let's find column five here we go 
Second, teachers use scripted lessons to bring students to mastery on a given set of skills before moving on to more complex material. For two, what word? I think I benefited from having a script because, you know, I could go in with a lot more confidence that what I'm covering is what I'm supposed to be covering. Put those together. Homa. Homonyms. I'm going to give you a point. That was close. My, my strength, I, I feel like, is, is just relating to kids and getting across to kids what I need to get across to them. I think that's my strength. So I think that um, DI plays into my strengths because it sets you up with everything you need to get across to the kids and it just let me as a teacher do that. Dorothy ran because the storm was coming. Get ready. Dorothy ran for the storm was coming. Wow, that sounds really good. Dor Dorothy ran because the storm was coming. Or you could say, Dorothy ran for the storm was coming. Tanner. Look at that. Over 92. Give me five on that one. Okay. Third, progress monitoring is built into the system so that students who are falling behind or teachers who are having problems can be quickly identified and helped. And I want you to practice every night. Looking over data is very important also. Um, we do that on a weekly basis so you know you only have to watch a child for a couple of weeks to see how they're doing on their mastery tests and if they're not passing their mastery tests then that tells us that you know, we need to go back and maybe reteach some of these things. Or if there's several children in a group that are not passing their mastery tests, it tells us right away that they're not at mastery. We need to go back. We need to do this again until they are at mastery. And we don't send them on and we don't move on until they have mastered it. Get ready. After. Yes, after. Next word. 90% of each lesson is review and only 10% is new so every child in my class was able to succeed and the main thing that kept me aware of that is all of the data that we receive all the time on their checkouts and so forth that really prove that they are learning the material and they are mastering it. Fourth, there is continual professional development, teacher training, in-class coaching and problem solving are provided by local support staff and NIFTI, the National Institute for Direct Instruction. The support they have provided to us has just been critical. Um, they're on-site coaching, uh, consulting they do, helping our teachers by modeling lessons, giving them feedback, using the data. All, NIFTI you know, helps us focus on the student data all the time. All the decisions are data-driven decisions. So they've just played a critical role in how well we've been able to implement the program. They started doing punctuating sentences where there's more than one person speaking. Uh, no, no. Our job is to come in and, and teach teachers and train kids and build that um, support within the principals and the coordinators and the peer coaches and the community. Our mission is to work ourselves out of a job in the, in the way that the school district then becomes the manager of the implementation. And finally, high quality instruction and hard work by teachers and students alike. Within months, Gearing's elementary school teachers became convinced. This has been, to me, the most powerful program that I have ever seen in my 15 years of teaching reading. What do we call men and women in the Army? Get ready? Soldiers! What were tells? How did I like how there's a lot of accountability, not only for teachers, but also for children. Spell that. Get ready. T -A -T -A -T. It is a big step for our teachers, especially those who have been teaching for a while. It was a totally new way of teaching and thinking for me as a teacher. And so it was difficult in that first year. I was constantly practicing and I had to think about what I was doing each day and each lesson. But then from then on, it's just gotten easier and you can put your personality into it and can make it fun and, and the kids do love it. They just made a phenomenal amount of growth this year. And I had never seen that kind of growth from a large group of students. The sentence should say, she should put it away. Listen again. It was a definite change. I was a little apprehensive at first, and now I wouldn't have it any other way. Read the whole item. Get ready. When the teacher says go clap.
people who visit the schools are just amazed at how focused, how intense the children are as well as the teachers. There is not a minute lost in transition time or teaching time or learning time. As a principal, I can almost count on zero discipline problems when it's reading time. Good, starting over for me, Skylar. Rather than wait three to four years for Gearing's elementary school kids to enter junior high, direct instruction was also implemented for grades seven, eight, and nine to get students who were behind in reading skills caught up and ready for high school. It was really a, a big change to, for our teachers since they had not had any reading instruction in their prior college instruction. So uh, this is, was foreign to them. After we got the, some of the results back and they felt more comfortable with it and could see where it was going, um, they uh, embraced it and we we're glad that we did it. I think our results show that. With everything his heart could wish for. Thank you. When this whole process started, I had real mixed feelings. Part of me selfishly thought, why should I, being a math teacher, spend a, a class period every day teaching out of my field, teaching reading? I felt very inadequate. But I found that the kids responded, and I began to see kids' creativity. I began to see them read better. My aha moment came in the middle of one of the stories when I had to discipline kids for trying to read ahead because they wanted to know what was going on. Students feel uh, more able to attack a content area. They will leave during junior high with self-confidence, the ability to know that they have confidence in, in themselves and can move on. Last word is threshold. What word? Threshold. Nice job. Let's go in back. only one year, the number of seventh grade Gearing students scoring above the 50th percentile on the Terra Nova assessment rose from 41 to 59 percent. Column two, we're going to practice these words. Word one. <laughs> Back in the elementary schools, the data has shown a steady increase in student performance. The averages of all demographic groups exceed the 2007 state averages. For the fourth grade statewide writing assessment, an important benchmark, the gearing fourth graders of 2007 achieved 92% proficiency. That's 8% higher than the state average, which ranks gearing fifth among the state's 25 largest school districts. For Gearing's Hispanic and free and reduced lunch students, the improvement has been even more remarkable. There was about a 23 percentage point gap between our Hispanic and white students. And now, um, this year, currently 2007, that gap has been reduced to two percentage points. And our Hispanic students are actually outperforming our white students. What we're seeing with our data is we're more at uh, 70 to 80 percent of our students being on grade level as compared to, you know, 35, 36 percent five years ago. After three years of hard work by teachers, administrators, principals, consultants, aides, and the students themselves, Gearing is seeing success for all of its kids. My kids work way harder now and they show way more progress now than what we used to teach. I had my kids write, what was your favorite thing about second grade? And almost every single one of them put DI. And then I had them write why, and I said, because I can do it and I'm good at it. Our job is to make kids feel like they can do it and they're the best, and we're doing that with DI. And I'm not sure we were before. All kids leaving my classroom will be ready to read and read well the rest of their lives. I, I don't know that I could have said that four years ago. It's hard work um, day in and day out, uh, keeping it going, but it's the right thing to do for kids. When you see every kindergartner reading by Thanksgiving, I think um, the, the work is well worth it. If we really do care about all students getting an education, then we implement programs for all. And this is a perfect program for all of our students.
For more information on direct instruction and how to implement it in your school or district, contact the National Institute for Direct Instruction at 1-877-485-1973 or email info at nifty.org. You can also visit the Nifty website at www.nifty.org. Thank you.